Over the last couple of weeks, you've seen all over social media that there's been a number of people doing challenges indoors and outdoors, um, Everesting challenges, indoor Everesting, long distance challenges. My personal favourite is this one. And that got me thinking, maybe I could do something like that, like a challenge or the distance challenge. I've done 200 kilometers outdoors and 200 kilometers indoors this year. So I thought maybe, maybe we go for 300. And that got me thinking. The first thing you've got to do is pick a route and pick a day. I was planning to go out on the longest day of the year, which I thought was the 21st. It not sometimes is, but this year it wasn't, so the joint second longest day of the year. And together with Ali, he made the route, so we had two choices. We either ride to the Humber Bridge and back, or just do a really big loop round, round this area. So we decided to do the loop round here. So I met Ali in between Bourne and Spalding before heading slightly north round to Beaver and Beaver Castle. Um, this is round where Terrace Hill is, the official 100 climb. Then went down to Melton Mowbray and was heading south, so it's like a crosswind down here. Um, this is about where we had our first cafe stop just for Market Harbour at Cafe Van 2 before looping around and having the tailwind back towards Oundle, which is where we had our second and final stop. We then head towards Peterborough around Ferry Meadows back to market deep in and into the flatlands for the final 40 kilometers. After this I needed to decide what I wanted to take with me, so food and other essential items. First item, heart rate belt and Garmin, so these two things are definitely important for recording the ride, knowing how far you've done. I used to take a power pack because I don't think my Garmin will last and I don't think Ali's will either, he has the map on it. Put a cable there for it too. Um, take the little sachet with my my Revolut card, which is what I used in France last year, so we can easily pay at the cafe and the shop. Um, mini pump, obviously. If you get a puncher, you may you will need this. Um, and then we've got a tyre key here to flick the tyre on, nice and easy. And probably the most important bit, chamois cream. If you want a nice, comfortable day on the saddle. Before we get into the video, please, right now, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll answer it. So it's seven, just before seven in the morning, we decided to give it another 30 minutes for the rain to clear. Don't really want to be starting in heavy rain. Um, apart from this little cloud, it's not meant to be a bad day, so let's go. Lost a bit on already. Bottle down. At this point, we had just finished Terrace Hill, uh, one of the official 100 climbs in the UK. Uh, we had about another 60, 70 kilometers until the cafe stop at Cafe Ventu, which would be our main stop of the day. And we just started to hit the main bit of headwind and the hills have started to come thick and fast. It was at this point I'd pretty much been fueled by my carb drink that which I started with in my bottles. Um, a bit of flapjack, a bit of malt loaf and I hadn't quite opened up the caramel wafers yet. Yeah, but do you want it? Sure. Good maker. Good boy.
just finished, so we've got the most important part. 300 kilometers, 201 watt average. Oh, big day of training stress score. I don't think I hit that heart rate, to be honest. I think that's lying to me, but some decent amount of calories burnt. And fairly decent ascent for Randy as well. Have a look what, what zones I actually rode in. Power zones. 5 hours 15 minutes zone 2. It's an hour in zone 3. That's not bad. So uh, day after now. Day after 300 kilometer epic day. It's gone out of my old trick mountain bike. It's down the river bank. Um, mentally incredibly tired. Didn't sleep amazingly well last night, but it was bumpy down here as well. Um, my legs don't feel too bad to be honest. Um, hydrating at well yesterday so it wasn't really my legs that gave way. It was just all the little bits that were aching like my hands and I got to the point yesterday where um, it was just trying to force food down especially after about 200k. I had to try to just get the flapjack in and just get that get that energy going. It was just before the final stop, where we could stop, stop up for water. And yeah, that was probably the hardest part of the ride. It just started to be tailwind. Parts of it didn't really know where we were either. Um, yeah, but the last, the last 30, 40k, we were, we could see this storm brewing to the side of us. And it was heading where we were, where we were heading, and uh, we managed to just about avoid it. it. It looked pretty grim. I think I think I got a video of it. Um, not a bad place to to have a bit of fun. There's always ways to do a bit of my cyclocross training down here. There's like a few river banks to the side here, and a few little bits you can run up and down. And down the other end, there's loads of trees and and twisty twisty bits. The only thing that's a bit dodgy is my stomach. It's probably because I was trying to force flapjack and carb drink in all for about 10 hours. Yeah, <laughs> can't be that good for you. But, oh well. So to conclude, 300 kilometers, mentally it's quite a long way. You're always just thinking, oh, it's still 215 kilometers to go. Um, the final 40k is nice if it's tailwind and flat. Um, eat and drink well, have a stop in the middle, but you don't want to be stopping too much else that just drags the ride on and you could end up doing 13 hours in a 10 hour ride. So keep the stops as little as possible. Just stop, stop when you need to and stock up. Um, I would recommend getting like a little handlebar bag or something or or just a bag that you stick under your top tube. It's just to put that little bit extra food in. You might not need it, but if you do, you know it's there, which is definitely useful. And if you need to take arm warmers, leg warmers off, you've got somewhere else to store store them instead of filling your back pockets up. With regards to feeding and food, um, try and mix it up, I'd say. You don't want to just eat the same thing over and over again. I tried to mix it up with a bit of flapjack, malt loaf, caramel things out of panini at the cafe stops and some cake and then the last 85 kilometers i had some I think it was wine gums and um, you don't want to have too much sugar too early on because for me that upsets my stomach a little bit and you just get sugar spikes so you feel really good one minute and then you feel really bad the next um, a good breakfast helps so a mixture of oats some slow release stuff also i think flapjack's good in the middle of the ride as well because it's it's got some oats in it and it's just slow release so you don't get them spikes in spikes in energy anyway thank you for watching don't forget to like this video subscribe as well and comment there'll be some maybe another challenge one day but definitely some more videos to come thank you